Consider the function graph below that is defined by the rule f of x equals 2 divided by x plus 2. For part a we want to state the domain and range for the function f. So to do this we're going to set up a table to hold our information. So in this column we're going to put the domain and in this column we're going to put the range. For this row we're going to consider the function f and in this row we're going to consider f inverse. So for f the domain goes from negative 2 to infinity. They are all the x values that are allowed inside this function. So it's from negative 2 to infinity in interval notation where the 2 is excluded and the infinity is excluded with a round bracket. The range you can observe goes from y equals 0 not included up to infinity. So we're going to have 0 not included to infinity with a round bracket. Now even though it doesn't ask for it, we've drawn in two extra cells to contain the information for the domain and range of the inverse function. And these will just come in handy later on. So we swap the domains and ranges for inverse functions. So we will eventually discover that the domain of f inverse is 0 to infinity and that the range is from negative 2 to infinity. For part b we want to explain why the function f has an inverse function. So f is a one-to-one -one function, which means when we swap x and y, it is still one-to-one, -one, meaning that it is an inverse function. So that is our explanation for y. For part c, we want to fully define the inverse function. So the first thing we're going to do is let y equal f of x. So this gives us y is equal to 2 divided by x plus 2. And the second step is to swap x and y to find the inverse. So that will give us x is equal to 2 divided by y plus 2. Step 3 is to solve for y. So to do that we're going to start by multiplying by y plus 2 for both sides of the equation. So when we do the multiplication on the left hand side we get xy plus 2x is equal to 2 and then we subtract 2x from both sides of the equation which gives xy is equal to 2 subtract 2x and then we're going to divide both sides of the equation by x to get y by itself. So we find that y is equal to 2 subtract 2x divided by x. Step 4 is just to express using the correct notation so when we do that we express the inverse as f inverse of x is equal to the rule and now this rule that we have over here can be simplified slightly to be 2 divided by x minus 2. And the other half of fully defining the inverse function is to state the domain. So this is going to be for x is an element of. And the domain of this is equal to the range of the original function. So that is going to be 0 to infinity. And that's what we found previously in the table in part a. So this is the fully defined inverse function with a rule and its domain. For part D we want to find the coordinates of the point of intersection between the graphs f and f inverse. And we know that the coordinates of the point of intersection will lie along the line y equals x. So that means we can solve f of x equaling x to find the point of intersection. So if f of x equals x we have 2 divided by x plus 2 is equal to x. And now to solve that we want all of the variables on the same line so we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 2 and this will give us 2 is equal to x times x plus 2 and now to solve this we can recognize that it's a quadratic so we need to get all terms onto one side of the equation so we're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation and expanding the brackets will give x squared plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. And we can try and factorize that by inspection but we'll find it's very difficult. So instead we're going to say that a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals negative 2. And we're going to use the general quadratic formula to solve this equation. So the general quadratic formula is x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, where a, b, and c are the values we found here, here, and here. So if we sub those in, we find x is equal to minus b, which is minus 2, 
plus or minus the square root of, and we're going to have 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is minus 2, divided by 2a, which is 2 times 1. So if we simplify that, we will get x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of, and here we're going to have 4 plus 8 gives 12 divided by 2, and now we know the square root of 12 can be written as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which equals 2 root 3. So we can write this as x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus 2 root 3 divided by 2, and now that will simplify down to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. However, if we inspect our domain, minus 1 minus the square root of 3 is outside of the domain, so the only solution that it can be is minus 1 plus the square root of 3, and because that occurs on the line y equals x, the x and y values are the same, so the y value is going to be minus 1 plus the square root of 3 also. So that is the coordinate for the point of intersection between the graph f and its inverse. So for part e, on the same set of axes as the function f, we want to sketch the graph of the inverse. And we want to clearly label any axial intercepts, endpoints, and points of intersection with their coordinates. Previously we found that f inverse of x was equal to 2 divided by x minus 2 for x is an element of 0 to infinity. So that is the part of the graph that we need to sketch. So because x and y have been swapped, we now have our vertical asymptote, which I'm drawing in here with the red dotted line, is going to occur at x equals 0, where it was previously y equals 0, and where x was previously negative 2, we now have y is equal to minus 2 as the other asymptote. The y-intercept of 0, 1 now becomes an x-intercept of 1, 0. Getting the inverse hyperbola through these points gives this curve here. And the last thing we need to do is sketch the intersection of f and f-inverse, which occurs at this point here. And in part d, we found the coordinate there was minus 1 plus root 3, comma, minus 1 plus root 3. So that is the coordinate of the point of intersection for the graph. So this graph here is f inverse of x.